All right. Well, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone uh, who's attending today. Really excited for today, uh, making stamps and using them in planners and bullet journals and card making like we're going to do today is one of my favorite things to do. Um, just to give a little bit of an intro for myself as we get started. So my name is Mark Figueredo and I go by Men Who Bullet on Instagram and YouTube and all of the different social media channels that are out there. Uh, my background is primarily in bullet journaling. This is how I started into using more crafts. I have kind of a background in like mixed media and some other stuff I played around with in the past, like watercoloring and other arts. I wanted to be an artist since I was a kid. Um, I have fond memories of growing up and just, you know, my magnet doodle going crazy and like learning about all this fun stuff and I've got to make a career out of it which is amazing and I'm, I'm really excited to bring my enthusiasm today and hopefully you do as well so just to get into it before we start down the path of actually the activity that we're going to do today I just want to let you know how I came into stamp making because this is something that I didn't know a lot about uh, when I was in college I took screen printing as a form of like fine art and watercolor but I never did block printing or carving or anything like that and a lot of what we're going to be doing today is actually stems from a lot of that kind of more traditional kind of printmaking space but I didn't know anything about it and uh, as I was getting to more crafts and getting into using like clear stamps and block stamps and things like that I wasn't finding a lot of things that I wanted to see especially in a bullet journal and as I was just like searching and searching and searching for things, my wife, who's actually an art teacher, had said, Mark, why don't you make your own stamps? And I was like, I have no idea. Like, how would I even do that? I have no clue. And she's like, well, I'll bring you home some stuff from school and you can try it out to see if you like it, because I know you, you'll go all in on a hobby when you get into it, which has happened. Uh, she was completely right. Um, but she brought home some just easy carving tools. Um, she brought home um, a rubber stamp block, like what we're going to use today. And she was showing me some ways that she teaches her students. And if she can teach elementary art school students how to do this, I knew that I was going to be okay. And so what I'm going to teach you today are some easy ways that you can make your own stamps. And we're actually going to do that today. And specifically, we're going to create stamps that we can use for card making. We're going to make two different cards today um, using some of these different products just to show you that it doesn't have to be a crazy process. There are amazing products out there, amazing creators, and I'm sure a lot of you uh, are checking out on Instagram and Pinterest and other places. But, you know, some of that feels a little out of touch. I know for me, I'm like, I'm not this professional card maker, but I can have fun with this. And I've learned some really easy ways to do that. So the, I believe the link is in the chat or definitely in the invite for what we're going to use today, uh, which I included, which is actually going to be just a printout of some different uh, stamps, uh, at least doodles that I made. Because what I found out is that I can doodle on anything. You can do use Procreate. You can download things off the internet if you want to, um, if you're just using that for your own personal self. Uh, and there's a few different ways that you can actually transfer doodles or ideas onto the block and we're going to switch over to that in just a few minutes um, and really kind of go through all of that so we have a top-down view and that's where i'm going to be most of the time uh, when i switch over to that in just a moment but i'm going to be doing my best to go ahead and uh, keep my eye on the chat as we're talking i know others that are on the call will grab it too um, but if you do have anything let me know and again if you have any other questions after the class um, you can certainly follow me on any of the other socials like i mentioned i'd be more than happy to answer questions as we go along and do that uh, so I don't think there's anything necessarily in the chat just yet. Um, if you are playing along uh, as we go today, and if you want to print out uh, this piece today, you can. Also, if you want to, it's totally up to you. If you are on a different device, a computer or an iPad, perhaps, where you have that, and you don't have a printer at home, that's actually totally okay. Something you can do is just hold a blank piece of paper over top of your iPad if you want to, and you can even trace over top of that to get that onto a piece of paper. But that's what we're going to be using today as a transfer method, or you can even draw right on top of your block as well, and we'll talk about that too. So just letting you all know that if you don't have a printer, but you want to play along, it's totally Okay, um, so I'm going to go ahead and switch over to the top down view. We're going to talk about all the materials that we're going to be using today um, and also getting into the craft itself. So I'm really excited for that. So let me go ahead and just move over to that space and then we'll get started. All righty, all righty, all righty, all righty. Let me turn that one up. All right, that sounds a lot better. Sorry about that. <laughs> all right, um, can I just get a thumbs up? Everyone can hear me okay? through this view. Okay, awesome, I appreciate it. All right, so I'm gonna try not to make a huge mess today as we're going through everything. But what we're gonna be doing today is we are gonna be creating two different cards. 
Um, the great thing I love about making your own cards is, you know, if you're at the store and you're like, I'm, I need to find something specific, you know, there's always a bazillion different ones. Or I often do this. I forget to buy cards, especially for special occasions. This is something you can easily put together for yourself. You can also get your kids involved with this. Um, over time, my, my girls have been really excited about using some of the different things that I've made to make their own cards. So if you're like, hey, here's just a generic birthday one, and that way you can easily put something together. We're going to be doing all of this, but before before we get started, I did want to show you kind of my process for this. As I mentioned, I got into this craft uh, and, you know, stamp and printmaking over time, and it did not start off in a necessarily a pleasant place. Um, I'm actually going to show you some of my very first ones that I created my first time around. And it's maybe be a little bit hard to see, but this one especially, I was like, hey, I want to create a little post-it with a piece of tape up here. And uh, as you can see along some of here, I was real messy with how I started. So the process of doing this um, can take some time, be patient and kind of figure it out. You can also start at a lot of different sizes as well. But what's cool is that I started here, but as I learned more and more and more, I started to create other things that I wanted to see for myself, especially in my bullet journal, in my planner, for cards and other things like this. And what's so cool about all of these is I can use these forever now, right? I can easily grab any of these and use them for a theme or whatever I'm doing. One of my favorites that I ever did was actually iced coffee. I use this one all the time. And after a while, I was like, you know what? I'm using this so much. I just attached it to like a small wood block here. And now I can just use it and stamp it wherever I need to. Um, you can really do whatever you want with these. And it's, and it's a whole lot of fun. So I just want to let you know that even today, if you're playing along or you're trying this at home, it's not going to be perfect. It's going to take some time. It takes some finesse, but like any skill, that is what happens. So let me go ahead and talk about the supplies that we're going to be using today for this. Again, if you already have them at home, that's fantastic. If you don't, it's totally okay. So the first thing that we're going to need is something to carve our stamp onto. This here is from Speedball. They're probably one of the biggest names uh, in printmaking that's out there. And all of these supplies you can get at uh, your local Michael's store. Hopefully everything's in stock or online, of course. This block is fantastic because you get a whole lot of it. I have about half of a sheet now because I used my other first part when creating this. But what I love is that even when you don't use all of it, even something as small as this piece, I can now use this to create a stamp. It doesn't need to be huge and big, and there's a lot of different options. We're going to talk about how we're going to get our stamp onto this in just a moment, but I want to talk about some of the other supplies that we're going to need as well. Um, the other piece you're going to need is something to carve with. So there's actually two different ways that you can carve into these. Um, you may see some people online using like an X-Acto blade to cut into rubber or erasers or things like that. I personally have not had a whole lot of success with that. And so that's why I always turn to these kits, essentially. So you can get an entire kit that has the speedy carve in it. And it also has um, these pieces too. But inside of here, you're going to get like all these different accessories. And each one of them is used for a different part of our process today. We have our really big, huge ones. This is like a five. Uh, that's on here. You'll see the numbers on here too. And that's going to scoop out really big, huge pieces of rubber or whatever we're doing. And then we have some that are even smaller, like this one, which is super, super fine, as you can see here. Most of the day of what we're going to be doing today is using the one and the five, just because we're going to be cutting out the details first around the image that we're going to be putting. And then we're going to carve out the rest of the big pieces quickly to do that. And if you're just using a little itty bitty tiny one, that's going to take a really long time to do that. But inside of here, there are other sizes that you can use as well. And all of them have different widths. This one is shaped more like a V, whereas this one is shaped more like a U. And this one is a lot tighter to get deeper details as well. And I think this one also comes with like a little cutter, which is good because we're going to need that today as we're doing that. Um, I also do want to let you know, too, just to be careful as you're cutting, if you want, just be careful of the surface that you're cutting in. We'll talk about some uh, carving safety, especially around your delicate fingers in just a moment when we get into it. But just make sure that whatever surface you're on, it's OK. You can put down, you know, paper towel or something else just to protect it. I just like to mention that just in case. I don't want you to get mad at me if you like dig a hole into your kitchen table. All right, the other things we're going to be using today are different types of paper. So the, of course, there are card making kits out there. You can do that, but I'm a type of person that just likes simplicity. And the cards that we're going to make today are just going to be pieces of paper that are folded in half. We're not going to be cutting anything today other than our stamps. So these are actually two different options that you can get at your Michael store if you want to. Um, one of my favorite is actually uh, the case in mixed media paper that's here because you can use this for anything. You can 
paint on this, draw on this, marker on this, do whatever you want. I also really like nice thick watercolor paper for this too, because something that I actually like to do with my cards after I stamp is to watercolor over them, whether it's just coloring them in or anything like that. And you could do the same thing with the markers. We're gonna talk about those in just a second, but you want something that's gonna be able to hold on to it. And you want something that's gonna be able to you know, stand up. You don't want like a, a flimsy piece of paper. Also, you need something that has a good amount of weight because we are going to be stamping on these with ink and they do tend to hold a lot of ink too. So you don't wanna have any bleed through coming through. So for these, this mixed media is 98 pound paper. The watercolor is 140 pound paper. So you want something that's going to be in this range and that's going to create a really nice and easy surface for you to make uh, cards on top of. The other thing, like I just mentioned, is going to be the ink that you're going to use. So I actually have two different ones here. Um, first is the Ranger line. I always recommend any type of archival ink. And the reason is, is that it's actually gonna work best, especially because it's permanent ink and it's waterproof. So if you're at the store and you're looking for a product, the waterproof and the permanent ink are two things that you want to look for. Because if you buy anything that is not, um, if you try to watercolor over it, the ink sometimes can bleed, right? And smear um, or be a little, little bit messy, but it's okay. But just make sure you're looking for that. Here's also from the recollections. Uh, this is another archival pigment ink pad that you can use too. So just make sure you're looking for those things. But I always say experiment. Um, it's a whole part of what we do is all about learning. The other things we're gonna need, some of my favorite products out there, are gonna be the Zebra products. I've been a long time fan. Um, some of the pieces that we're gonna be using today are actually going to be these dual uh, ended um, ones. So you've probably seen the mild liners that have like a chiseled edge and then like the bullet edge, at least that's what I call it, super fine edge. Uh, these are really cool because they actually have a brush edge. So if you like to do brush lettering or anything like that, you can use this, but you also, have this bullet end on the other side too versus that chisel. I like this because what we're actually gonna be doing today, I'm gonna to show you another way to do faux lettering or faux calligraphy. Um, if it's something you don't feel super confident in, hopefully I'll be able to show you how to do it and uh, you'll feel more confident in, uh, in your lettering today. So we're gonna be using that. And then the other items that we're going to be using are the click art markers. So we're also using these. These have become a big, huge favorite of mine as well because um, if you've ever lost a cap of a marker before, you know how, how sad that can be. These are really cool because these are retractable and I actually use these all the time with a lot of my stamps to color them in. So it's a great way to take even something like a regular stamp that you might have and using that and almost using like a mini coloring book. And these are great because they are retractable and so you don't have to worry about a cap ever whenever you're working with them. So we'll be using all of these products here today for this. So whether you have them already or not, um, that's totally okay. Again, if you're not playing along, you can grab these products and go through with it. So the next thing that we're going to be doing is talking about transfer methods. So getting your image onto this block is really important because you're gonna use this block as your base. We're gonna be carving away from this. So today we're going to be using a method which is just using a pencil. I just call it the graphite transfer method. We're gonna be using that today. And that consists of really two different ways that we can do this. One is just tracing over your lines with your pencil and then flipping it. And we're gonna rub it onto the surface here. And that's how we're gonna transfer this today. You can also do the opposite, which essentially is running a graphite pencil along the back of here and then tracing over it again. Remember, you're gonna get a mirrored image of whatever you're creating on here. So sometimes I like to let people know about that option there. There are some other options too that I really like. If you don't want to do that method, one of my favorites is just using tracing paper. Um, this is actually my stamp making sketchbook because I realized after a while, like if I draw inside of regular paper or something like that, I have to then transfer it to tracing paper and then transfer it back. Um, so you'll see like some different ideas in here in the past, uh, like I was just showing you uh, my light bulbs, for instance. They started as these here, which then I just transferred onto the block by tracing back over them and just kind of made the composition that I want. But I've been playing around with stamp making for such a long time. But just to show you real quick, again, if you were doing this for yourself at home, you would just take your printout, you would put it underneath of your tracing paper, you would then use your pencil to then trace over top of this, and then you would take the tracing paper, flip it over on top of your block, and then rub over top of it. So there's a lot of different ways that you can do this. And then another way that I just want to just mention, uh, if you're interested, and I always like caveat this because I know how my brain works, um, there are blender markers that you can use as well. 
And I just misplaced my blender marker. I literally had it a few minutes ago, but um, you can get blender markers. And if you print anything out on ink jet paper, so it's, I'm sorry, laser jet. Let me rephrase that to make sure that I'm saying that correctly. Blender marker on laser printers. You can actually flip your image over on top of your block and then use a blender, like an alcohol blender marker to trace over top of it. And it does a really nice transfer of the image straight onto the block. And I have so many art materials on my desk right now that I lost that one. Um, but you can always uh, check those out online and maybe someone can drop one of those inside the chat if possible, just so you all can see what that is and where that is. But we're going to do a really basic way of doing this, which is the way that I learned about doing it. The other thing is if you are printing off the print material uh, from the class, it is going to come in kind of an eight and a half by 11 size. That's how I designed it. But one thing that I was thinking about, just in case, you can always size these appropriately for your canvas. So if you're making a card that's a bit smaller and you want to make these chat bubbles, what I always recommend doing is before you print, scaling down that image. So this is actually scaled down 80 to 80%. Right, so we're going to get just a slightly smaller image here. So if you really love this chat bubble, but you're like, Mark, I'm going to use this in my journal, or I'm going to make a miniature card, then you can scale this down to 50%, 40, kind of as small as you feel comfortable with before doing what we're going to do next. So I just like to throw that out there. All right, I'm just going to look at the chat real quick before we go into this. Can you draw on the watercolor paper? You absolutely can draw on the watercolor paper. Um, you can use the markers on the watercolor paper, and they actually work really well. Um, the other reason too, and I forgot to mention this, why I love the click art marches too, is that they actually don't smear with ink. So it's a really cool way for you to interact and use different markers and mediums together without having to worry about that. Um, so you're in a, in a really good spot. All right, let me just scroll up. I don't know if there's anything else that we saw in there. Doing my best to keep it. It looks like Emery's helping out. She's getting some stuff in there. All right, so let's go ahead and transfer our two chat bubbles because the first thing that we're going to do is just a really nice, easy, hello, howdy card here. And what's great is you can keep this however you want. If this is the card and you want to write a nice note inside of it, you absolutely can. So what we're going to do for this one, we're actually going to be using the watercolor paper. So this is a six by nine inch piece of paper. And this is, like I said, literally, literally coming right out of this here. I'm not cutting it at all. It just happens to be a perfect size. And all that we're going to do here is we're just going to fold it in half horizontally like this to give us our space. Now, if you are a card maker, you might get mad at me because I don't have all of my card making materials, but you can get, um, there's like a bone uh, piece that you can use with card making and card you can put down to get like a really nice edge. Again, I'm saying, hey, bare bones if you want to, but what we're going to do is just really make sure that we are pushing down the edge here. I actually sometimes just use a marker or a pen here. And you're just creating a really nice hard crease on here. And that way your card sits nice and flat. Or again, if you're you know, putting it up anywhere, you're gonna have a really nice surface like that. So we're just gonna create that first because this is gonna be what we're gonna be stamping onto in just a few minutes. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this and just sit this off to the side. Now what I'm gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and transfer these two pieces. So as I mentioned, we're going to be doing just a graphite transfer method. So this works with almost any type of pencil. Um, you just wanna find that it has a little bit of a darker feel to it. And all we're gonna do is we're actually just gonna trace right over top of the black lines that are already on here. And I like to kind of just do like a sweeping motion with it because you really wanna get a lot of the, the graphite on here as much as you can, just to make sure you're getting a good line. Now, this isn't going to be perfect. Again, don't worry if you go off a little bit. If you do go outside the lines, grab an eraser, you know, you can always come back to it and do it. It'll be okay. And then we're actually just going to go all the way around this another time just to make sure we got all of our lines. It can be a little bit difficult to see, um, but we'll be in a good spot. I mentioned earlier too, if you are interested in doing like a reverse method of this, if you're like, I don't really wanna to have to draw over my lines that many times, something you can do is actually um, kind of color on the back of here. And maybe we'll try that with this other one just to show you the different ways you can do this. Uh, you can just do like a light line over top of the image here. And that way, when you trace on the other side, you're gonna get a bit of a, a carbon uh, copy, so to say. One of the reasons I don't particularly love this 
is that every block is a little bit different and you'll actually see this because I did this method before where you'll kind of get some of these like smudge lines uh, when you transfer just because it's graphite and the speedy carve sometimes does that but I just want to be able to show you two different ways that we're going to do this the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and cut these out too because I want to be able to position these easiest and because it's a printout I can print this out a thousand times if I want to we don't have to worry about it All right, so this will be the main one. And then this will be our second one here. All right, now let's go ahead and transfer these. So this is the exciting part of this. Uh, so when you are gonna be setting these on here, you want to give yourself a little bit of space, but too, not too much space. Um, I tend to be a little frugal when I buy these, these materials. You know, sometimes they can get pricey depending how you're working with them. So when I'm laying this on here, I want to kind of just kind of get a little bit of a feel around for it. I want to give myself a little bit of space on the edge as I'm going around here, but I don't want to give myself like too, too much space. I know that's not like super specific or scientific, but I think anyone who does crafts understands a little bit of these. Yes, a bone folder. Sorry, I was just looking at the chat. Someone's like, Mark, it's a bone folder. Why are you being silly? Yes. So if you want, you can just take your finger and you can kind of just press down on here. You can also use a pen. You could use your pencil again if you wanted to, since you can kind of see those lines, right? And trace back over these. And I just like to hold my finger down to just see what I'm getting over here, right? So hopefully you can see it's a very, very faint line that I'm getting on here. You are going to try to get as dark as you can, but just know like it's just graphite. So you're only going to get so dark with it, but you do just want to make sure that you can see the details. And that's feeling pretty good for me. I'll hold it a little bit closer. Hopefully um, you guys get a good view, but you're just going to get like a very, very light uh, imprint there when you're doing that. And it works out really well. And then for this other one, like I said, we are gonna go ahead and try to utilize the space as best as we can. We're just gonna put this up here and I'm gonna do the same thing on this side. I'm just gonna trace back over it and the graphite that I kind of smeared on the other side or sketched on the other side is gonna show. I wish I had background music for you all. I'm sure it's very nice just to listen to me breathe while I do this, but <laughs> it's the process. Okay, I'm gonna lift that up. So you'll see here, we kind of got all of the scratchy lines that we got from this. That's why I don't necessarily like love, love that process, but it's okay. We're still gonna be able to work with it. We're not gonna have any issue here. Um, one of the materials that I didn't mention as a part of this, but is helpful, is some type of a permanent marker that you're going to use. Because of this method and its pencil, as we're carving, it can actually smear as you go through. So what I will often do is I will take a marker, Sharpie, something permanent, right? That's not going to kind of go away. And I just do a real quick trace over top of what it is that I'm gonna do. And this for me is just saying, I'm locking you in. I like the way this looks and I'm okay with it. And so what's cool, like I mentioned, is that because of this process and using pencil, you could erase this if you wanted to. If you were like, I'm really not loving all these pieces or something's a little bit off, whatever that might be, um, you can change it, but then I just always say, okay, Mark, we're we're happy with this. Let's lock it in. And that's what we're going to do. Now for this one over here, unfortunately, um, you know, there's a lot, there's a lot that's not happy there. So luckily I know what this looks like because I can also like put it next to it and be like, okay, what does this need to look like? So uh, this is just going to be just an easy chat bubble. And this I also mentioned before too, if you don't want to do a transfer method and you feel very confident in just drawing right onto um, your speedy carve or any of the blocks that you're doing, you can do that also. A lot of great artists that are doing printmaking and stamp making, that's actually how they do their work. I'm just not super confident in myself. I just really prefer doing these different type of methods because at least I know like, okay, it looks good here, I can transfer it. Um, also, if you're interested, like I said, you want to print something off from offline, these methods work out really great too, because it might be a specific type of image that you don't feel confident with, and you can absolutely do that. I always just like to say, just as an artist to other artists, right, is if you're going to print something off that's like copyrighted or something like that, 
I, I'm pretty sure the rules are just you can't sell it, right? So if you want to make a card for yourself or someone that you know and you're not selling it, you know, printing off a character or a likeness or something like that is okay. Um, I just like to say that though, just to be careful. All righty, I'm going to go ahead and take a look. Everything looks like so far we're doing pretty good. Um, I was seeing Donna was saying, amazing that you lose <laughs> you lose your tools when making cards. I used to use my finger now. Oh, gotcha. Use your finger now. Oh, yeah, you can use whatever you want on top of here. I do. I lose stuff on my desk all the time. Uh, yes, Donna just mentioned Disney related. I wasn't going to say specifics, but yes, especially Disney. Um, people like those. All right. So with the tool, the speedball tool here, what's great is, first of all, there's storage in the back. Uh, especially with these little metal tools, you want to have a, a nice place for those. I'm just going to mention it. I know we're all adults here, but these are sharp. And so one of the things that we'll be talking about when we do this is actual like carve safety as you're using these, um, especially when we get into the carving part, we are going to just talk a little bit about technique because it is really important, especially when you're carving towards your fingers or away from yourself. So the first thing that I'm going to do is actually use just like this cutting piece here. And I'm just going to go ahead and I'm just going to kind of give myself some space, right? You want to have a little bit of space to grab onto. And I'm just going to go ahead and cut out my two different shapes here. Now, I don't, I don't have like a cutting mat. I should have had one on here. So I'm just holding mine up. So just make sure you're watching your fingers um, as you're doing this or grab a cutting mat uh, and you'll be good to go. But you just want to kind of get each of these out individually on their own. And that way you can spend specific time that you want on these and you don't have to feel like you have to do like one big thing at the same time. Also, you can start to do like a little bit of trimming on these as you go through. Again, you want to give yourself space. You will come back again and trim a bit closer as you get into this. But just the biggest thing that I always remember with this is there's no undoing when you're using this type of material, right? Like if I cut into a line or if I cut through my piece, there's no pasting this back together. I mean, technically you could, but it's not gonna work out that well in the long run for you. All right, so now that we've cut these out, the first step for me is always to use the smallest carving uh, item that we have here. So this is going to be the number one. There are a lot of different brands out there that you will find when it comes to this. Some of them, you do have to be careful. They're actually for wood block cutting, not necessarily for like, uh linoleum or the speedy carbon stuff like that um they're very huge they're very big some of them can be used uh together though so like it can be used for different types of carving um i just always like to just look for these specifically and especially if they come in a kit like this one does you know you're getting all the right stuff all right so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to screw this on here nice and tight um, and i'm also going to put the end back on here too because when you're carving it's nice to have something for that to lay into as you're going through with it as well um it's a really important part of like what we're doing here um before we go ahead and do the rest of this i'm actually going to grab just a little bit of a, a thicker marker here too because sometimes you want to get like those bigger thicker lines right so i was trying to look to see if i had but i don't know i think i just yeah i just cleaned my whole desk so it's looking like that. But I want to make sure that my lines are a little bit thicker. So I am just going to go around these again and just give myself a little bit of a bolder line. And this is just helping me visually. And what we're going to be doing uh, as a part of this is we are going to be carving away everything that is pink or not with, not with the black marker over top of it. Um, this is, you know, we're, we're kind of doing a, a method here where you're taking away. There's also another method where you could carve over top of the line instead of away from the line. Um, in just a second, I will find one of my other pieces that looks like that. That's cool too, because you kind of get this whole reverse where like you'd get like a black image or whatever color you're using as your stamp, but then the outline of it is what you don't see, right? Or it would be the paper. So there's a lot of different ways that you can approach this different making here. All right. What about a cutting board instead of a cutting mat? I'm just looking at the chat real quick. That's absolutely fine. Um, as long as you're okay with that cutting board getting, you know, cuts into it. Uh, definitely want to see that and it'd be good. Nice to see a lefty working. Oh yeah. I forgot to tell you all that I'm a lefty. So if you're a righty, I think, I mean, the rest of the world is made for righties, right? So lefties, we, we persevere, we make it through. Um, but this is a, I feel like this is something that you do with either hand. We're good to go. All right, great. I'm just gonna do this one real quick um, and we'll be good. If you do have any other questions while we're going through this, definitely drop them in the chat. Uh, I'm peeking over at that every now and again. And then we've got the rest of the team that's answering questions, it looks like as well. 
Um, but whether it's about process, whether it's a kind of any questions that you're getting into these, um, especially when we get into the carving part, I like to look up because that's one of those things that just takes time. And you know, we gotta have a good conversation while we're doing that. All right, and we're in a good spot here. Perfect. All righty. Let's go ahead and start with this one first. As I mentioned, I wanna be able to do that. And let's see if I can zoom in just a little bit. Can I? I don't think I can. Let me just lower my camera. I just want to really get into the details here because it's really important when you're doing it because I think it's important to really see, like it was hard for me to see what this looked like when I first got started. So we're again using the one that's inside of this kit here, which is a very, very fine detail. And what we're gonna be doing is we're gonna be moving our piece around as we go. So uh, similar with like cutting with a knife, you don't wanna really try to cut towards yourself because this sometimes can skip and I don't want you to stab yourself. I wanna make sure that you're safe uh, <laughs> doing this. But the same is gonna be true as you're carving with this too. You never wanna put your finger like right in front of this because if you pick up, you're gonna pick up some of this rubber and potentially pick up some of your finger too. Um, the truth of it though, the reality is that sometimes, especially when you get closer doing this, this is definitely a take your time um, craft. You don't wanna rush through this necessarily. Maybe when you get better at it, you can. But I'll be honest with you, I love doing this. Like sometimes I will do this like Sunday morning, especially when it's nice outside. Like I'll just, you know, transfer something onto some block and I'll sit out on my back deck and I'll just like drink some coffee and and carve. And like my wife and my kids are like, what are you doing? I'm like, yeah, I'm relaxing. This is relaxing for me. It works out really nicely. All right. So what we're going to be doing here, like I mentioned, is we are going to be going just outside of our line. The first cuts that we do are all about removing the, the fine line detail around the image. Now, as you do this, it's not going to be a very deep cut at all. Um, it's actually gonna be kind of thin. So just to kind of show you what we're getting out of this. Now there are different, of course, there's always gonna be like different, um, different depths, right? Depending how hard you press down or what you do, but for the most part, they're going to be kind of thin. And depending how deep or how thick you want it, right? You're just gonna press down a little bit harder to get more of that as you go through, but you're just gonna be paying attention and making sure that you're staying as close to the outside of that line as you can. And I, let's see if I can move this a little bit closer. Here we go, I think we'll be good. All right, because I just need to be able to see it. This is definitely one of those like close up things, right? You wanna make sure, especially when you're doing kind of fine detail. I always recommend when you're starting this to start with bigger images because that's just gonna help you, right? As you learn and kind of hone this, this skill, you got to get deep into those details. One of my favorite stamp artists um, that's out there is actually um, Eric Small Things. She's a Japanese. She actually makes hers out of erasers. And her detail is so fine. She's one of those creators that actually uses like an X-Acto blade to do this. And it's amazing. And I'm like, I want to be like Erico when I grow up. Um, I just can't do it. Uh, so I was like, okay, I'm going to start with something a little bit bigger as I go through with this. And it's been super helpful. Now, just some tips as you're going through with this, especially when you're coming up to corners, I like to do a little thing where I kind of stop and pick up and that picks up the rubber uh, as you're going around here. So don't feel like you have to get perfect into those corners as you're doing it because you can always stop and pick up again as you're going through. All right, so we've made it all the way around here. Um, one thing I didn't mention also, if you want, you're going to have a lot of these little pieces of the rubber as you're going through. I actually typically have like a small mason jar, or in this case, like I have like a small container. I just put them in here as I'm working and just keep them off of my table. And I also don't get yelled at as well if I'm doing this like outside, for instance, on the patio. And my wife's like, why are there little pieces of the stuff everywhere? I'm like, okay, well, I'm being a good boy now and doing it. So just to have something there, um, I have a lot of different containers with pieces that I'll just put in, you know, slip them into. Um, so just having that's just a good thing to have. All right, so now we're doing the inside part of this. Um, if we want to, oh, Barb, I just saw you missed the answer about the cutting board instead of a cutting mat. That's absolutely fine. Um, I just like to let people know, like this is different than like a knife. This is gonna sometimes put a bigger, you know, gouge inside of whatever that is. 
So as long as it's a cutting board or material that you're okay with potentially, um, you know, getting something cut out of. You could also use a glass top if you wanted to. Um, that's something that I see a bunch of people using. Um, it's just something you just want to make sure that you're okay with potentially, you know, something happening to it. Uh, can you cut deep like through the pieces? So yes, you can cut as deep as you want to. And we're actually going to be cutting deeper with one of the other pieces in just a minute. Right now, we're just getting around the details inside of here. And you'll see why in just a moment, because uh, when we come into it, I almost use that kind of like a guide for the edge of the blade as I'm cutting around it to take out bigger pieces. So the smaller pieces, as we get into the details here, I just want to be able to show you. We just want to take small cuts and stop and like lift up. And what you can do is, you know, you're slowly taking things away, especially with a small blade like this or a small cutting piece. You don't, you can only take away so much at a time. Now you could come in here with a larger if you wanted to. My experience has always been that if I come into these fine details with something a lot bigger, I tend to make mistakes. Um, it just, it's just natural, it just happens. But do whatever feels comfortable to you as you go into it. And I'm also gonna say too, just like with stamping with any type of material, this is not gonna be perfect. Uh, even for myself, you know, I've been doing this for a few years now, I'm still gonna make mistakes. I'm still gonna cut into lines by accident. I've just learned over time just to take my time as I'm going through with it um, and we'll be in a good spot. We'll do that. All right, someone mentioned that they don't have this cutting tool. So how would you do this? So the other option for you, if you don't have one of these cutting tools, would to be use an X-Acto blade. Um, that process looks a little bit different because instead of just carving away like we're doing here, you end up cutting on an angle and then removing the piece. And so it's just one of those things, again, I personally have not found a lot of success in doing that. Um, before I bought this cutting tool and some of my other cutting tools, I did use that method when I first started. The problem with that is you have to pay a lot of attention to how deep you're cutting and the angle in which you're cutting as well. So with this, it's great because you, you kind of, you know what you're going to get right when you're using it. And this isn't that expensive. Um, you can buy the tools on their own if you don't need like the whole kit. And these will last you a really long time. These blades that I have here will not dull easily. And you could cut, I mean, honestly, depending how often you're doing it for years, honestly, um, until you start to notice that they start to get a little bit, um, a little bit dull. And then you can just buy new ones if you want, or, or you can do that. I'm terrible with an X-Acto blade. I come from a design background, like I mentioned, and I have such horror stories and I'm so triggered by them from cutting into my hands during my projects. I know how you feel. So I don't trust myself with the blade either, but I trust myself with these. All right, so we've done, and we've gone through all the details here. Uh, again, I always try to, it's a little bit hard to tell, but when you're up close, you'll see very, very fine lines all the way around my piece here. So now we're done with the fine detail. Now we move into like the much faster part of this, which is gonna be, taking away the big pieces of this as we go through with this. So I just want to make sure that this is set in here really nicely. There we go. And I'm going to screw this on nice and tight. Now this here has the number five on it. This is probably the largest one that is inside of this kit. We have a two and we have a three and we have a five. So you'll see on this one, it's a, it's a U shape and it has a really large area here which is much different than the one, right, that we were gonna be going with here. So this tool is used to take out big old pieces of this rubber as we're going around. So let me start on the outside. So now, because this is a bit deeper, you do have to pay attention to how deep and how far you're cutting. But what I like to do is I like to use that very small piece that I already cut out here as my guide. And I just like to keep an eye on my blade as I'm going around. And I just keep it inside of that groove. It's almost like I gave myself like a little bit of like a runway that I can follow around with this. I also like this process too, because I can get really big, long pieces of rubber to cut out. And I think it's the most satisfying thing ever. And I love it. It's like, how far can you go with this, you know? So 
you don't have to make them long. You can do them short. But I'm always very proud of myself when I like make it all the way around one of my stamps. Again, you just want to be able to turn this as you're going. Again, a lot of the time I tend to turn my block or my stamp with me, not my arm as much. My arm actually right now can stay pretty um, still and I'm just moving the block around instead. But it's a little gentle balance as you do both. All right, so that's the outside. So that takes a lot less time than that detailed one. But because of the time we spent on the detail, we're able to move a bit quicker. Then once you've moved outside of there, it's a little bit more of like a free for all. You still have to be careful because you will still slip with this tool. It still happens. And the last thing you want to do is spend all of that time, you know, going around and carving out your stamp only to then make a mistake because you're rushing at the end here, right? And like accidentally jump with it. So just make sure you're taking your time here, but you can move a little bit quicker. I'm only going to remove kind of like two layers of this outside of that main line because we don't need all of this block when we actually get to the point where we're stamping. Um, we're actually gonna cut away a lot of this. So don't waste your time too much. I don't know what the exact measurement is, but it's like literally like a quarter of an inch or maybe even less of space that we need there. Um, I just like to leave it there. Cause I'm like, I don't need that. I'm coming back to it, I'm cutting away later. Now for the inside of this chat bubble, we'll make it a lot easier because we're just gonna go ahead and just cut kind of straight lines uh, across here as we want to. So this is just a technique that you're starting on the edge with that little groove that you gave yourself. You're pressing down and you're moving that blade across and then you're gonna pick it up a little bit before the end of that line. We can always come back and clean that up on the edges. Again, we're going line to line here and we wanna keep the integrity of that outside line as much as we can especially because we're like at the end of carving this. And the last thing you want to do is like your last, you know, pull with this blade and then like cut half of your stamp. It'd be very sad, but it's okay because you already have your print. You just flip it over if you wanted to and use the other side. But like I said, this is something that I find to be very soothing. Um, at first it was very nerve wracking, right? You're learning a new, a new skill. You're working with new tools. You're trying not to cut yourself. But after time, it is really just super fun. Um, like I said, it's like a, a fun hobby to do. All right, we are almost done with this. Now, because we are running uh, short on time um, as we cut up to it, I'm not going to cut the other one on camera. I just wanted to do one with us, but you would do the same process with this, with your other one um, and go through with it. So now that we cut away all the big pieces, the first thing that I'm gonna do is go ahead back to the first piece that we had, which was this cutting piece. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just going to cut around this just a little bit. You, like I said, you wanna give yourself enough space. You don't wanna to be too, too close, but you don't need all of this extra. It's just really kind of getting in your way. And when we go to print also, it's really important that you don't have too much because you do wanna get a good feeling of the placement of your stamp when you're doing that because if you have like a big rectangle or a big square and your image is not that it's a little bit difficult because unlike clear stamps if any of you have used clear stamps in crafting before right you can get a good idea of where that's going to be um, instead so it works out when you get to these edges here something else that i will often do is kind of cut at like a little bit of an angle here the whole idea that when you're when you're doing this is we don't want anything to print other than what's raised up, right? Which is going to be that line. And the first time you do this, and even now you're gonna see me, I always do a test print with my stamp to find out where those, uh, we'll call them inconsistencies are, but where those raised pieces are. Some of them you're gonna be able to see, you know, just like the naked eye, right? When you get this up close, um, you can pay pretty close attention and you might say, oh, that's a little bit raised or more where it is. Um, around the edges here, I can see that's a bit raised. You do have to be just a little bit careful. Again, you don't need to cut super deep, but it needs to be deep enough so that your other lines are raised. And even with some of these grooves, you'll see actually when we do our test print, it's just inevitable they show up. Sometimes they look really cool. Um, I'm actually a really big fan when they actually show up. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, I can't get rid of you. But we'll see what it looks like in just a second. Uh, Donna asked, can I use scissors for this part with cutting around it? 
I think you could, you just have to make sure that it's something that could cut through the thickness of something like this. Um, you just wanna be careful with it. Um, you might have really awesome scissors. I've never used scissors. I've always used a blade or a cutting tool or something like that myself personally. Um, but I would say try it carefully and then let us know if it works out. All right, so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna do our test print on this. So this is actually a trick that I learned or a tip that I learned from someone um, in the card making community. So often, right, we take our stamp and we press it on top of our ink pad here. And what happens is that you then you get ink on your fingertips and then you get ink on whatever you're printing onto or whatever you're doing. What they taught me, and I'm so grateful for this, is to take your ink pad and take it to your stamp instead. This is actually gonna do two things for us. One, keeps our fingerprints away from the ink pad so we're not getting them onto the thing that we're using. And then what you're gonna see here is it starts to bring out the parts of the image that are actually going to be printed. So as I just mentioned just before, you're gonna see some areas that need to be cut away before we print this. These lines here in the middle are just a little too high. So what I can do is I can go through and I can just slice these away and get this somewhat ready to go ahead and print for what we're doing. I'll just clean this up somewhat quickly. I don't wanna to spend too much time in the fine details today, because again, when you're doing this at home, because this is supposed to be relaxing, uh, you, can, you can take your time with this and, and go into it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and cut these out real quick. And then let me go ahead and get my paper back and I'm just doing a, a real quick print. So I'm gonna lay this down and I'm just gonna lightly press around the edges of what I'm doing here Oop, and pick it up and you'll see that we have our first print. So that's fantastic. You're gonna see a lot of those details. Again, I still have like little itty bitty pieces here that I could carve away if I wanted a really nice piece. But honestly, sometimes I really love those lines on what I'm doing. It just makes it feel really fun. So I'm gonna go ahead and pull out our card now. So first thing I always check, make sure it's opening the right way. It's a really important part of this process. And what I'm actually gonna do before we lay this down, I'm actually gonna go ahead and use um, some of these double edge markers because what's cool about this print, as you just saw, it's only going to print where the ink is on. So we have all this background area that we can do something with. So the first thing that I'm gonna do is actually just draw a big oval at the top here with the mild liner. Again, I love this brush because it really does feel like you're painting, right? You get a lot of coverage with it as well. For this design, it does not need to be perfect and it's going to be offset a little bit. That's the thing I'm actually trying to accomplish with this is not for it to be perfect. So we can do that. So let's go ahead. We're gonna bring our stamp pad to our stamp. And then we're gonna go ahead and take it. We're gonna be careful and we're gonna lay it right where we want it to be. We're gonna press down a little bit and then we're gonna carefully lift it away. Now, I will always recommend never, ever, ever go back for a double print. So for instance, you'll see over here in this corner, a little bit of that's messed up over there. You will, unless you are some type of magician, you will never, ever get a perfect print back on top of here again, right? So what I always recommend is using a marker you can or whatever you want and you can just come right back over top of that to fill in some of that detail right it's black ink or whatever color you're using or you just leave it also the thing to remember this is watercolor paper so the paper itself is texture so it actually is meant to capture paper i'm sorry capture water and hold on to it so that's what it's going to do and if you don't have water right you're just doing that print you're gonna see some of that texture come through on your paper too. So sometimes it's not even about how hard you pressed or anything like that. Sometimes it's just the simple fact that your paper has texture to it and you want to be able to like make it look like that. So I'm gonna take the one that I already uh, made before uh, as a part of the demo for this. And I'm gonna go ahead and just stamp on this again, get that ink on there really nicely. And then I'm gonna flip it right on top of where I want it to be. One thing I'll also tell for you to just be very patient and careful at this part, because what happens to me often, very often, is as I'm lifting this up, I lose my grip and it drops back on top of my paper. And then you have a little bit of a, an issue here. Um, just take your time with it. It's worth it at the end. All right, so we've gone ahead and done our print. So the next thing I wanna teach you how to do is just some really quick faux calligraphy, because if you really wanna add some extra fun to the card and personalization, you wanna be able to like, 
put something cool in there. So this is just a hello card. This is a, how are you doing? What's going on? And so to do this, what I'm gonna do is actually take, let's see what color we wanna do here. I think I just wanna do just maybe just like a darker color. So let me actually pull out my, my click arts here because you can use any type of pen for this. Uh, let's do like, let's do like this color here. I'm not always great with like picking out colors also. I will fully admit that. Uh, so we're gonna pick out these two here. Now these two markers are just kind of like a bullet edge, right? It's kind of small. Um, it's what, point, uh, point 0.6 millimeter is this. If you have a thicker one, you can, but we're gonna do full calligraphy here. So what that means is I'm gonna first draw hello in cursive, like the same way you learned in school way back when, maybe I'm realizing that that doesn't happen as much. And we're gonna just write out hello in a, a mono line, just like that. And let's go ahead and do the same for down here. Did hello, and then I'm gonna write howdy. Um, you could write any type of form of, of, of hello or greeting. I think this would actually look really cool if it was in a different language. So if you're writing to somebody who speaks a different language, look it up on Google on how to say hello in their language, make it very personal for them. Um, as they're getting it, which is super nice. All right, and then the faux calligraphy part. So faux calligraphy is essentially writing over top of your calligraphy, again, just to make it look a bit thicker. So if you've ever done calligraphy or you haven't, the whole idea with calligraphy is thicks and thins. So the idea is that when you go up, it's thin. And then when you come down, usually you're pressing a bit harder, right? And you get like a thicker line out of that. So remembering that, what I do is I air trace and I go thin and then I'm going to do thick. And then I'm going to actually draw another line right inside on this downstroke to go through, right? Up is thin, down is thick. And if you remember this all the way through, then you're gone ahead and you're creating that thick and thin that you see with calligraphy. And what's really great is that when you have a good marker, like these click arts, that ink blends together and you cannot even tell that I had to do fake calligraphy. It looks like I'm an amazing letterer and I'm the best person in the world and I made you a card, like your friends are gonna love you for this. So it's just really fun to do this and think about it. And at the end, you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, I just made a card. I carved my own stamp. I made it look like I knew how to do calligraphy. I mean, everyone's going to be so impressed. Like this is Instagram ready. This is ready for Facebook. This is ready for Twitter. This is ready to send. It's pretty fantastic, right? So this is our Hello Howdy card. And we've gone ahead and then we can write whatever we want inside of here. Now, the other card that I wanted to show you, and, I, and you might have seen in a picture, is a fun one. So you can do anything that you want with these, right? You can say, hey, hello, howdy. Or you can tell a fun joke. I'm a dad. And so I have all of the dad jokes. So this is one that um, I'm also a stationary addict. Um, so what do you call, it should say paper airplane that doesn't fly, stationary, but I'm done. Um, so if you're interested in kind of doing anything like this, this is actually another one that is on that sheet that you saw. Um, this is severely scaled down. Like I said, you can do that or trace over top of it. But one of the things I also love to do with the click art is different type of fonts. So if you're the type of person who doesn't like calligraphy or you never ever want to have to worry about it, it doesn't mean that your handwriting can't be interesting. One of my favorite fonts to do is, is all caps. So actually I write in all caps all the time. My dad did when I was little. And when I realized as an adult, I can do whatever I want with my handwriting. I just write in all caps. So a really fun font that you can do for yourself is I call it uh, big little. So I'm gonna write a big W and a small H and a big A and a small T, all right? I'm just gonna do this as I go all the way through, right? And just to write out the joke. But this is one of those fonts that anyone can do. Like no one needs any special skill other than the fact that you need to write a big letter and a little letter. I use this all the time inside of my bullet journal. Um, I don't always do like really crazy fonts or I don't do, you know, do a lot of lettering uh, or anything fancy. Sometimes I do if I'm feeling that way. But a lot of the times, just something as simple as changing the, the height of your stuff can make a big difference. And you can do it pretty quickly too.
So I wrote out my joke. We're good to go there. And then what I need to do is just grab my paper airplane that I had. Again, that's already on your piece. And then I can just go ahead and stamp this real quick with some ink. Flip it over on my piece. Pick it up. And then I always like to draw the little paper thing where it comes from. So all you're doing here is drawing dashes to make it look like it's flying. And then if you want to, you can always add texture to these two. I always find it be interesting. So you can either carve that into your stamp, or I mentioned before, you're actually fully welcome to color these in on your own if you want to. And so we're just gonna go ahead and draw some of these quick lines on here, right? And then, well, I think I might've smeared a little bit here, but then you have your card and then you can just, you know, put your punch line inside of here. Right, you can do a lot of fun stuff with this and however you want to, but what's great is that now that we've done this, I have stamps that I can use for the rest of my life. I can make as many cards as I want to um, just again to show you some of the other ones that are on there, I added some stationery. so if you wanted to write on the inside and put some of those on here, you could you could lead your punch line with some of these if you need to, and then you just kind of go all in and it's just super fun and really exciting. Um, and different ways, again, that you can use this for card making. Again, then you can use this in your journals or anything that you want to. So appreciate y'all hanging out and uh, checking this out today. And I really appreciate it. And let me go ahead and switch back over to the camera if we have any questions and to close things out. All righty. We're back. All right, so I'm taking a look through best class ever. Oh, thank you so much, Mary. I appreciate it. Thank you all so much for coming and learning this. Again, if you're interested in learning more, you want to check everything out. I actually have some videos on YouTube that I created around different ways that you can do this. So youtube.com slash men who bullet. And again, all the materials and everything that we use today, you can get at Michael's. So you can head into the shop or buy them online and then always rewatch this class again at your own pace as you're going through taking your time and having a good time. So I really appreciate it. Are we doing any kind of outro or anything like that just before we uh, close anything up or any questions that we want to answer? Um, Mark, you can say whatever you want for your outro, it's fine. <laughs> Oh, that's fine. Okay, that's fine. So again, I was just, I just didn't know if we were doing kind of like outro for, for y'all. But again, thanks to Michaels for having me. Um, thanks to Zebra as well for this as well. Um, I have so much fun with these different products. And like I said, this is stuff you can do over and over and over again. So if you do have any more specific questions, again, you can reach out to me on Instagram or Facebook or even in YouTube in the comments too. I'd love to chat with you more about this and share anything else that I've learned over time. And if you are making anything, whether it's from this class or otherwise, tag me in it just so I can see it. I would be so happy to see you creating something from this class or even exploring things on your own and then sharing them online. So I would absolutely love that. And uh, I hope you all have a good rest of your day and uh, I'll talk to you all soon. See ya.